Okay, so been all on the go, uh, to be honest, on this one. Really pushing forward nicely. To start off with, the tub. Um, to be honest, I didn't realise it was aluminium underneath. Okay, so we've actually hand painted a little bit of buffable uh, aluminium just under there. Need to polish yet, uh, and everything else. The real reason for doing it was down in here we had horrendous big gaps of trying to get this entire system together. So what I did was I just welded it up uh, and left it like that. To be honest, you're not going to see any of this by the time the gear goes in there and everything else. It's pretty much going to be hidden. It's a nice touch because you can see all the workings underneath, but let's face it, you're never going to see it. Okay, so we put on uh, the front end round here that is on there. So that really completes that cockpit tub looking very, very much the part now. Very happy how that has all turned out. So we can leave that off to one side. So now we can turn our attention to the gun area. Now the gun deck area, as you can see just down in here, is literally very straightforward. We've got the formers for the side of the nose wheel, this little piece at the front. Okay, then we've got the rear bulkhead, which is also uh, at the gun area. So we've put these two down in here, so they're just glued on. They're omnidirectional, it doesn't matter which way those goes in. Okay, and then we put the front plate down and in. Okay, as you can see, down in here. Okay, so this is down in and put all in there just like that, as you can see. So it's the nose wheel peg area. Uh, and gone through okay and then all we've done is we've painted this with RLM 02 and for our case I use XF22 Tamiya I find it just easy to put down and then the same thing as we did with the cockpit wall area we just gave it a scrub with uh, the metalizer that we've actually got on the brush this way it just gives us our depth down here and everything else and what we will do obviously later on we'll come in with an oil wash just around to give everything a bit of shade but again it gives it that metal shininess look that I'm going for for this particular build we've got some placards to go down the back and some little bits of photo etch as well just to liven this area up at the same time we have done the guns so the guns to be honest they have just been hand painted in if I can find the bottle of uh, there it is, uh, 214, okay, which is the dark iron for these down in here, and all the other metal areas on here we've used stainless, which is 213. The reason I like the stainless, as you can see it down here, it has a real colour to it, it's really, really nice, it has different shades and stuff. This one hasn't even been buffed yet, I'm going to buff it all when it's in situ, okay, because what you actually have to do is build the uh, the the sort of the gun feed areas from the ammo which would be underneath that brings them up and then obviously they get ejected on the outside as it comes down uh, the outer chutes okay so basically we've got this inner part down here which is c80 okay and again exactly the same thing it's had that nice metal scrub on it just to give it uh, a better feel now the guns themselves i think are all exactly the same and do not i think they're just like a, a general fix I don't think there's a left and right with any of these okay so I'm just checking that there isn't a left and right I can't imagine but you see they had a nice scrub it gives them that nice metal look and then what's going to happen is they are literally just going to come in and fit in now for the moment I'm just going to do them as a loose fit I'm not going to glue them in in case they are in some type of order but they're going to fit all in there like this and in a moment they'll fit in but as I said we need to get those uh, shoots put in there first so actually what we've got here is a couple of the others okay so these two are the ones that are going to go to the rear and then place up and everything else now because of this and the way it's a little bit fragile and things what I'm thinking is there's a little bit of Tamiya extra thin just in these areas just to make these fit in. Okay, so that one goes in down in there and then it literally pushes up. So it just slots in that little slot and then feeds in. But as you can see, it has a real nice metal look to it. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same on the other side. So again, little drop down there, a little bit in the hole. Okay, and they're gonna feed up in this part. On the instructions, it looked like it's one piece, but actually it's not, it is two. Okay, then we've got these little guys, which to be honest are still on their frames here. So we've got 87 uh, and 88. Okay, so we just nip this guy off and then if we need to, we can touch it in afterwards. Okay, so this is 88. So this little guy is just gonna fit in here.
Okay, so that one is going to fit in and then it's all going to line up with the guns. Okay, so then quickly we'll just put in the other side, which I do believe will be to match Paris 88 as well. Okay, then we can get these guns in and then because we're using uh, a little bit of extra thin like this, hopefully it will give us a little bit of wiggle room just to manoeuvre this all round. All the way around, even. That's it. So that's those put in there just like that. Then we can come along with the guns where I do believe, unless I'm missing anything, it doesn't really matter how this goes in, okay? But the thing is, you do need to place at least the top two just to purely because to get the angle to get them to come around and to feed in and everything else because they won't actually do it when it's in there. So that's in there like that. So we're just going to come in. I'm just going to glue this down. The reason for using this particular glue, if you're wondering why I've changed it, is I'm finding that the um, using the... Uh, the other glue, uh, the Plastic Magic, is a little bit hot and it's melting the acrylic paint so I don't get this trouble with the Tamiya. So again, just goes in. You might see just down at the back there, the gun just slots into and actually it's a bit of a wedge fit. Okay, so that fits in. And then the gun just pushes in literally like that. Then the outer ones should slide in and we've got the little, this is the little area where it's going to fit just down here and here, here in the bottom, okay? So then again, this should push up. This guy I think is going to need a little bit of glue, but we'll get it in there first and then glue it once it's in. Yeah, I think we're going to need a little bit of glue. And again, just that touch. Okay, and that puts it in like that. Again, we're going to buff the hell out of this and get this to feel a little bit more because we know it's going to go. We have put that one in that side. Okay, making sure this is vertical. Making sure those guns are all nicely square and put in so they're going to sit in there. Now, to be honest, if you were doing this in a really detailed fashion, perhaps like we've done with some of our previous builds and that, you might want to look along the lines of going down the aftermarket route. Now, I'm not aware of anybody at the time of doing this build that actually makes this section, but it's just a little bit clunky. No, these guns are clunky, being cannons, but... You know, I'm thinking it should be a little bit more detailed, a little bit more refined, but hopefully we'll get in here with the plastic cards. We'll put those in there in a moment. Uh, and if you wanted to, obviously you could do a little bit of work with some uh, wiring in that. But I'm thinking with a wash and with some of these other parts that have still got to go in yet, we'll have this neatly taken care of. Okay, so we just grab these last two off of here. Okay, and pop these down. Because once this is all in and dried, we'll buff uh, all of this just to bring it all nicely together okay so with these we're assuming that this is going to feed uh, probably the shorter ones might be better to go in first so again a little bit of glue just down at the bottom here and then Yeah, just feeds in, just like that. It actually all lines up really, really nicely. Better than I thought it was going to. Originally, when I was looking at this, uh, and you're sort of working out your plan of attack for it, I'm thinking, that looks a mess. Okay. Again, don't really put any glue, certainly a hot glue, on metalizer parts. Do it down where it's going to join, but not anywhere up here, because what can happen is it will affect the finish of it. And in a moment, when we buff it, hopefully we'll get a slightly nicer finish off a lot of this. Uh, and it will give us uh, a quite a nice looking uh, texture to the metal. 
and a multi-texture, things like that. So again, this guy fits very nicely just in the top on that side. And then this little guy just down in here. Okay, and that is those all done. Very firm, very solid, very nicely done indeed. Once those are dried off, what we'll do, we're gonna come along with our finger, give it a rub, buff it all up, then we'll come in with some oils just to go around and take care of those. There is a couple of placards which we've got literally just down in here. That's these little guys here, which are just going to fit, or hopefully fit just down into this to give it just a little bit more detail. I'll we'll just nip off a couple of these just to show on one side and I'll finish it all off afterwards once it's dry. Okay, so we've just got a couple of these. And again, you could put it in if you wanted to with a little bit of um, PVA glue or you can use obviously what I'm going to do here, a tiny little bit of super glue, literally just to be a dab in each location would just be one side. Okay, so we're just going to pop a little bit on that one, a little bit on this one, and then again, just nudge that into position. Okay, these are supposed to be little wiring type areas, but it just gives a little bit of detail down in there. But it said if you wanted to, you could pop along now with some of your own wiring if you wanted to and literally run it around absolutely everywhere. We have got a couple of bars in a minute which are just going to come from to the top down to the bottom in there like that. Okay, but I'm going to let that dry, get the other plastic uh, placards in there just like that and say get it all to dry firm, buff it all up and everything and then actually what we can do is get it installed into the aircraft, we can get it installed with the cockpit section in there and everything else and get the two halves together so they can be dry. Okay, so I haven't done the oil wash yet, I'm probably going to put it all together and do it afterwards but there we go, that's our uh, little gun system all done just like that it's basic it's a little bit chunky it's revel uh, if we're honest it's just that that level of refineness and detail isn't quite there why it's not there I'm not too sure uh, because really I don't know how you would improve it if the guns are like that it's just that sometimes with if you're using resin or certainly uh, upgrade sets they tend to have that more sort of refineness and everything else like that but to be honest it depends even if you're going to display it are you going to have the actual weapon bay doors open they are quite big you'll be able to see nicely in there I think it'll be a nice touch I think it'll look a bit better when it's got a wash on it and things like that but generally you know I'm not overly uh, enthralled with here the actual idea uh, down in here you might notice we've got these chutes, uh, these are the empties that come out in the bottom, uh, so we've just done them with aluminium and we popped those in beforehand and uh, I think it's like A2 and B4 uh, on each side of these ones, very straightforward just like that. Okay. So next up we can actually install the gun and I haven't tested this yet, so I'm not even how sure this goes in, it's forward of the bulkhead, but it, I think it's a... Uh, Oh wow, well, actually that's a really very nice fit, so what I'm going to do is, I'm not even going to mess around here, I'm going to glue this because it's holding right. Again, we're going to use um, Tamiya Extra Thin purely because it uh, is a nice good fit in there. Uh, it's a shame we can't get inside all of this, uh, but you might notice on there that's a, a really good fit. All of that, so what we're going to do is going to pop a little bit just around the front here, and then hopefully, I'm not quite sure how that fits up and in, it just sort of sits in there like that. So we just hold that a second just for it to start going off, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're just going to see how this is down here. And to be honest, it doesn't look like it's sitting particularly nicely on the nose. That's the only thing. I'm just seeing exactly how this nose section fits in. Okay, so we just yeah, 
can't really see a, a best way to poke that in. It's like there's just something in the front here just jabbing on there a little bit. The rest of it is pretty much in and happy. That's pretty much there. What we do is we're just going to run again capillary action, touch and flow, don't brush. Okay, and what we're going to do is just see how much we can get to pull in around that front, around this nose gear section. So we're just going to hold it there just for a little bit. It's one of those things you do with about eight pairs of hands for this. But we're just going to hold that in position and let that go. The one around the nose, what we'll do is I think we'll get the other half put in there and then we'll um, put the nose on just to see exactly how it's butting up. Okay, so that one's in there like that. This is looking pretty good all along here. So what I'm going to do is again, it's capillary action. Missed it. Okay. Again, there's just some reason this isn't... Oh, I see it pushes in just behind the, the nose door by the looks of it. So it is just going to go in like that, with a bit of a nudge. Again, just watching the old fingers. We are going to probably going to go around and uh, do some more riveting detail to this. But that's the gun bay fitted in. Needs a lot of weight in here. You can probably see how this is drying off. See the spot? Uh, if you just leave it, it will just go back. It will come back. It will be absolutely fine. You won't have to worry about it at all. Okay, so that's that one in. Now, it is pointing out at the back end there is a little hole to open up. Although, in the usual brilliance of uh, Ravel instructions, it doesn't really point out where it needs to be opened up. So, we're going to second guess it and just take a nick. Um, down here, there is two... I think it's just one little hole there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to nick it with a knife and then we'll know where it is. Just put a little B cut just down in the back here like that and then that way we'll see it and then we can come in and glue it. So what we're going to do is we're going to offer up both halves together just to see how this is going to go in, how it's going to play. So again, it's all about test fitting just to see, so it doesn't look too bad on the top, what I'm going to do, a couple of little bits of tape, this is just for speed, and again really you want to wait till you're properly done, but this will do just for the minute, we can just pull this round, and we can see how this other half of the nose is going to go in. There we go, that's going to sit in there just like that. That doesn't look too bad at all, so what we're going to do, again, capillary action. So you just touch it and let the drip disappear. Okay, and just be mindful of the outside. We've got a little bit of glue just on the outside. If you don't touch it, it will dry and you'll be absolutely fine. So we are going to need a good lump of weight in the nose of this thing, as we know. Okay, so we're just going to put that around the front, and then what we're going to do, we're just going to put a little bit of tape, <coughs> just holding this nose section in, and then again, we're just going to let the capillary action do all the work, just draw up and in. together. Again, really very, very nice indeed. Beautiful fit on this tail. But when you do the cut, touch and flow, don't pull your brush away until it's all gone. And that way what happens is if you've got any excess it'll stay on your brush and not run off for your fingers. Okay. Very nice on that. <clears throat> 
Now I knew that the the um, this was going to go together well because I've already done a test bit of the two fuselage halves. If you're wondering about that, was lucky purely because if you remember rightly, we pointed out that there's an ejector pin on the top of the rudder uh, of the tail, so it was just literally up here, and you need to get rid of that guy because otherwise it's a right royal pain. Okay, good old fashioned pegs <coughs> from around the tail section. Okay, I'm just going to glue the inside of the tail. Scissors, because we don't want to get too close to the tail by putting fingerprints in it and all the rest of it. We can sand and shape and whatever. So we're not cutting, we're literally just holding and crimping slightly together just to pinch it in. That's all you do. Okay, and then under here, so I'm going to do a generous dollop just at the tail, right up the rudder. Okay, and then on this side, same thing again, just round in here. Okay, and then this guy at the top, just from the inside. So we just drop the glue in. And that is it, as easy as that. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to let that dry for the next sort of five, six minutes, and then we'll un do it all the areas and then just give a quick whip on the outside just all those glue areas to make sure they're sealed up totally and all really nice and everything else like that but there we go that's the first proper stage of this guy completed okay so we're pushing on with the actual uh, me262 so we got it put together buttoned up okay we have put in as you can see at the top this top plate which actually is just a drop down fit very very simple you need really to put it in before you start sanding and taking care of things purely because it puts the correct spread into this. At the same time, under here, you might notice we've got this little guy in, which makes up this instrument panel system set. We've got the box and the little uh, armor plate just behind in there, so that is fitted in. Then we've gone round and really we've just taken care of the seam lines, which is a standard type of way. Usual thing when you're sanding, I can't you know say it enough times, do not push down on your sander. Let the sander do all the work. If you're using the Flory model sanders, they are specifically designed to work with styrene plastic, which means you don't want to be pushing down because all you're going to be doing is putting heat and scratches into the plastic. So all you literally do is just lay the sander on the top and just pulling backwards and forwards. So that way you'll smooth out all the imperfections and give you a very nice sanded surface. The problem one, to be honest, is this little guy under here. As you can see, it's very shallow, uh, which means it's notoriously difficult to flatten out and sand flat an area. So if you've got a slight step in it, again, it's one of those things. It's time, patience, and persistence in a lot of cases. So by using a slightly bigger one, we use the blue sander here on the fine side, 45 degree cut angle, and then just worked our way up and down, gently going at it, having a look, looking for the shiny spots when it's all flat, then we come in with a sponge and just going over it again. So don't push down, just lay the actual sander do all the work. So you're just resting the sander on the surface and just pulling backwards and forwards. The great thing about using that technique is you don't generate heat. If you don't generate heat, you won't soften joints and cause more problems as you go right the way through. So that is done and in there, very happy how that's looking so what we can actually do now is install the cockpit now the cockpit tub itself is just like that as we've seen before looking very much the part very happy how that's turned out now the only thing is obviously we got this line you can see just down in the bottom here but when you drop this on uh, and it pops in and don't get me wrong as you can see it looks fine from the inside no problem but when you look in you might notice we've got a gap up here Okay, now it is that thing, does it push right in? Does it not? How does it go? Have I got something wrong? Is there something, you know, amiss right the way through? And again, you don't want to be gluing this in place because if it's too far out, then nothing's going to fit. So what we did, we've actually cut off the sprue, the bottom belly plate system. Now this has got to have formers in and wing formers and wheel wells and everything else like that. But for the moment, I just want to see what's going on. So all we do is just lightly place this into position as it will be. Okay, and then we just sit this on 
and we just want to see how it's clearing and making sure it's fitting down in there and it's not affecting the spread or anything else in there. Okay, so it actually is good. And as you can see, even with it in, we've still got this little step all right, so that means it doesn't matter. We've also, don't forget, we've got the glass section's gonna go in there, it's gonna hide that, uh, we're all good to go. So instead of just ramming this right up in there, which then could put an artificial spread on the wings and then the wings won't fit correctly and everything else like that, we are literally just gonna place it down as part of the instructions. Okay, we're just trying to line them all up. So it's all down in there like that. Okay, once it's in and we're happy, then we're just gonna come in with the thin glue couple of taps okay and we're just gonna knock this in now the reason for you using the extra thin is it's the closest thing it comes to hand no other reason it's nothing to do with speed or anything it is literally just the thing that I've got to hand and I can grab it now I've just noticed as I've been gluing this something's moved because as I was pushing something has just shifted you might notice at the top that steps going so this is just pushed up for some reason. So what happens is sometimes that the glue physically melts um, a, a little bit of something that's interfering or we've just split the seam at the top, which we may have done just a little bit. But whatever way, I'm quite happy to sort of go with it. So what we're gonna do is just gonna hold this for a moment whilst all this dry, dries off and goes off and holds into place. Okay, so it's not going to hopefully affect anything, but you don't want to jam it up there too far because it's going to spread the top and then obviously things like the canopy won't fit and so forth and so on. And then you're going to have trouble with the wings and everything else. So try and test fit if you can, making sure you've got it square and level in there. And if you have, you should be absolutely fine. So I'm just going to hold this for a few moments, let it dry off, and then we can get going on the actual pulley system, all the control surfaces that go in here. And then obviously we'll be working on the underside with the wheel wells uh, and the areas for the lower wing section.